Got a bit of sad news in today's video. This is my Radio Shack Portavision 5 inch color CRT television from 1998. And as you may remember, I've been using this TV to monitor my 8mm videotape digitization task that I'm currently doing. I've had this TV sitting on top of my mother's DVD recorder hooked up to the video output of the DVD recorder just so I can monitor the uh, transfer process and also use the DVD recorder's menus to finalize the disc when I'm done and make any edits on the disc if necessary. This TV has been working just fine until one day I was done using it for the day it had worked just fine and I turned it off for the night and the next day I turned it on and it was doing this. Take a look. This is very absurd what it's doing here. Now take a look at that. Now I probably should turn steady shot off here. As you can see, this is not the camera, it's the TV itself. It's extremely blurry. You can't see anything. It's very blurry. And the picture is also flickering, briefly going dark before coming back. And this is so this is what it was doing. And um, you probably won't be able to hear on camera, but I can hear there's a very faint sort of a hissing sound coming from inside the set. So I asked on Video Karma, the Video Karma forums, I described what this thing was doing and asked if anyone had any ideas. And people came back and invited me to open this thing up, take a look inside it, just make sure there were no um, cold solder joints, particularly in the high voltage area where the flyback transformer is and where the CRT connects to the flyback transformer with the little circuit board coming off the back of the neck of the CRT and uh, look for any wires out of place, just basic stuff like that. And I did open this thing up and I found nothing awry. This thing was extremely clean um, and everything looked just fine. Um, so I put it back together and I turned it back on and I decided I would look through the vents to see if I could see anything awry inside the vents while the unit was running. I am not trained um, to repair uh, CRT displays. I'm, I'm not knowledgeable, I'm not trained, and I don't feel comfortable working inside a CRT display. I know my limits when it comes to safety, working on electrical stuff, and CRT displays is where I draw the limits. I will not work on a CRT display. I won't have one turned on while it's running, while it's outside of its case. I'm not comfortable doing that. And I generally won't touch the inside of one even though it's been unplugged just because I know CRT tubes can um, you know, hold a stored charge like a capacitor and it's, I'm just not comfortable working with them. So I put the thing back together and then turned it on. Look through the vent on the side and this is what I found. I'll see if you can see this. First hopefully it's visible to my eyes. Yes it is. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Yes you can. Aha. Now let's see if we can zoom in on it. See that little purple dot there? That's an electrical arc. And it's happening on the outside of the neck of the CRT. Right on the very back where it connects to the little circuit board. Yeah, you can totally see it there. Yeah, that shouldn't be happening. Um, this thing is not in good shape. Oh, look at that. I can get you a good inside look there. And you can smell the ozone, as a matter of fact. I think that's as good of an image as I can get you. So you can see that purple arc there. It's emanating from the very back of the neck of the CRT, right where it connects, right where the electron gun and everything wire into a plastic socket, which is soldered to a little circuit board. There you can see the circuit board on the back where the neck of the CRT connects to. So that's where it's coming from. So I would assume, I think that's a broken wire coming off the CRT. And yeah, as far as I'm concerned, especially where I'm generally not gonna work on CRT stuff, I'm uh, comfortable calling this thing 
pooched. I think it's done for. Um, and that's really too bad. Because I got this thing, as you know, a couple of years ago, mint in the box. And there's the box right there. At a yard sale, ten dollars. And, um, that's just, that's way too bad. Because this thing's just in perfect condition. It worked great. It's been working great for this project. And then it just up and dies. Um, probably a manufacturing error that just took, you know, a few hours of use to manifest. So that is really too bad. So, yeah, um, there's nothing that can be done by the looks of it. Just from what I can see visually, it's probably not something that can be fixed anyway. Because whatever is broken that's causing that arc, it's possibly partially inside the CRT tube and... And yeah, it's possibly not fixable. So I'm just going to dispose of this thing. Um, I'll keep the parts. I'll keep the power supply. I'll keep the cables it came with. I'll keep the box just to put crap in. I'm just going to throw this away, I think. It's really too bad. It's, it's really nice. I really like this thing. It's just such a shame. Just a, you know, a freak anomaly like that. Totally kills this thing. Really too bad. So... I, the uh, digitization project is actually stalled right now because I have no way to monitor um, the recordings. Actually, well, actually, I do have one way. I could use my Hi8 camcorder to monitor the recordings um, because that has discrete, you know, full-size RCA composite video jacks on it. So I could use my Hi8 camcorder in place of this TV. Um, but I'll have to find something else. Um, my mother has a television set. It's a really cheap Chinese thing that she bought years ago. It's a little 8 inch or 9 inch unit. So it's physically not too much larger than this. Um, and it does have full RCA composite uh, input jacks on it. So I might steal that from her if she's not using it. But yeah, I, I might use this as an excuse to just buy another vintage portable TV. Um, I've always wanted to get another um, vintage color LCD portable TV, like another Casio. Um, Casio made one that's slightly larger than normal. It's got like a 3.5 inch display they made in the early 90s. Um, I'd really like to find one of those. Which that reminds me, I, I've got to do something about my uh, my present Casio portable TV I have. Because that thing doesn't work anymore. It just gives you the green screen of death. So I might have to open that up and see if there's a, any capacitors I can replace. But anyway, um, that's it for the story of this thing. It's really too bad. Very unfortunate. Um, but that's how these things go. Oh, before I go, I do have something interesting to... Uh, to mention, um, I was extremely surprised to find that the CRT tube inside this thing is a Samsung tube. I, that's the last thing I've ever would have expected to see. I would have expected just a nameless, generic, um, Chinese or Taiwanese or whatever tube. No, it's a Samsung tube made in Korea. And uh, that's just very surprising. It's got a Samsung part number on it and everything. I'll show you a picture here of the label on the inside of the tube um, showing, you know, Samsung logo and all the information. And I'll show you another picture of just everything inside this thing. Um, so that's what it all looks like inside. So there you go. Um, very unfortunate event, but once in a while these freak anomalies happen.